What is up, Ordy fam, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Guys, we're back with my guy, Not Just Bikes, and going to be checking out Do Your Buses Get Stuck in Traffic, Traffic Solution in the Downs, Thompson Paradox, I believe that's what that's it. But we're going to check it out. Guys, definitely been enjoying everything about Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam. I actually got to watch a longer video that kind of showed different uh, other towns around in that area and it's pretty nice it's real nice and hey i just i just love it i love it already uh and this one's gonna be interesting just talking about the buses because i know down here uh we don't really have buses that run because we're i'm in a small town but the nearest city uh is big they usually have buses and stuff and they have their own little lanes and stuff they don't get caught in traffic or anything like that so we're going to see what this has to show us. Y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Send down your recommendations. When I'm visiting a new city and I want to know if it has any chance of being great, the most important thing for me is walkability. Walkable neighborhoods are always the best. But the second most important thing is the answer to the question, do your buses get stuck in traffic? This one question reveals so much about a city's priorities and the way its citizens live. Let me explain. There's a term in urban planning called the Downs-Thompson Paradox. The equilibrium speed of car traffic on a road network is determined by the average door-to-door -door speed of equivalent journeys taken by public transport. Uh, yeah, but it, it basically means that it doesn't matter how many roads you build. Car traffic will get worse and worse and worse until it becomes faster to take the bus or the metro or the tram. You okay. I remember y'all talking because I was saying the train and I was like, it's the tram. Um, and maybe maybe that's what we have. I know we do have buses, but uh, in the nearest city, but I don't think I never see them in traffic, to be honest. But then they got the tram. I remember being in in New York and having they have the subways and stuff like that. So it becomes faster to take the bus or the metro. So like the metro, like I've been in something similar. Might as well, I guess they call it the subway in New York, and I, it gets you. It gets you from point A to B very fast. Or the tram, you get the idea. And this isn't some academic curiosity either. It's been observed time and time again in cities all over the world. But while it might seem paradoxical at first, it actually makes a lot of sense if you give it some thought. When it comes down to it, there really aren't that many car people, bicycle people, train people, or unicycle people. <laughs> the vast majority of people in the world just want to get from point A to point B That's as quickly and conveniently as possible. Well, maybe not the unicycle people. For Amsterdam, it's often a bicycle. For Tokyo, it's usually a train. But for far too many of the world's cities, it's a car. And the reason for this is very clear. Why would anybody take this bus if it's going to get stuck in the same traffic as a car? And it's gonna go slower. And I know my day is just, when I play basketball, we'll be we'll have to play like an hour away, right? But that bus, it kind of almost add on an extra hour. And I'm talking about a school bus, not like the regular bus, but it's like the school bus is gonna, be t it's gonna take that long than those buses are too. Definitely wouldn't want to be on, in traffic on a bus, though. I couldn't, I couldn't do it's it. It's going to get stuck in the same traffic as a car. The answer for most cities in the U.S. and Canada is simple. You ride the bus because you're too poor to drive. If you had any choice, you wouldn't. Poor? <laughs> I don't be bored to drive. Some days I just don't want to. Comment below if some days you just don't want to drive. Or if for, those, for my cyclist people... Maybe you don't feel like riding the bike that day and you're just like, eh, I'll take the bus. When your public transportation is only used by the poor and the desperate, it's hard to get much support <laughs> for it. People taking the bus are looked down upon and anybody wealthy enough to have any political influence whatsoever doesn't care about improving service. If anything, they'll see public transportation as a nuisance, for instance, complaining that the streetcars are in the way of their car. They just want Dang, it to go right away. In front of it. This is the... Look, I don't care where the poor people go, just as long as they're not in the way of my car. Approach to public transport. Ultimately, Whoa, what that, that means that. Was that some type of? 
I know it's not a real Care where thing, the poor people go, just like as long the as they're not in the way of my car. Approach to public transport. That would be smart if a bus was kind of like that and people at the top, but people that's driving can still go under. That would... That would be that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Ultimately, that means the city devolves into a mess of car traffic with giant gaps between the rich and the poor. But back to the paradox. If buses and trams get stuck in traffic so it can never be faster to take the bus, then what happens to car traffic? Well, it increases. Yes. Almost indefinitely. And North American cities have continued to take on more and more debt yep. to build roads they I work, I work in the city, our major city, and it's probably worse than this. I'm in traffic on my way to work almost every time. Like, kid you not, what take what should take me 45 minutes, take me like an hour, 15, hour and a half almost. And that's because of traffic. You never know if it's school traffic, uh, a wreck or anything. That's And it seems like it's every day. Like school, usually I can beat the school traffic. But you can't, it's always a wreck because somebody's rushing or driving carelessly. They can't afford in an attempt to manage it. This is typical hourly traffic volumes in cities in the Netherlands, with clear morning and evening rush hour. However, in cities where there are no alternatives to driving, car traffic becomes so bad that people mm. start leaving earlier and earlier. Pretty soon, to. rush hour morphs to become several hours long. Here are 16 lanes of car traffic in Oof. Toronto, Canada. That's just Toronto? This video was taken at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday in the middle of summer holidays. Hey, there's definitely some Texas traffic too. If you've been to like Dallas, Houston, maybe even Austin. It's not, maybe Dallas and Houston, this may look like this. Austin kind of sort, but it's flooded, flooded with cars. Always in traffic in those cities. Daytime traffic never gets better than this. Every one of these people had a choice of how they were going to get around that day, but this city made decisions that meant that every single one of them had to choose a car. We ain't got no choice. So what's the solution? <laughs> Thankfully, more and more cities are waking up to the problem and have started to do something about it. New York recently removed cars almost completely from 14th Street to speed up the buses. Mm. San Francisco recently did the same on Market Street. And Toronto removed most of the cars from King Street, which has significantly increased streetcar ridership. What's also interesting is that while the Downs-Thompson paradox was originally described for public transportation, it actually applies to any alternative. Hmm. If it's more convenient to take a bicycle, See, then... See, that one was smart right there. It's like that little tram. It's in the middle of the cars and stuff, so it should never get in traffic. Or at least you would think. Transportation. It actually applies to any alternative. If it's more convenient to take a bicycle, then some people will switch to a bicycle, as is common in parts of the Netherlands and Denmark. And if it's faster to walk, then people will walk. An incredible statistic is that 40% of people who live in downtown Toronto walk to work, because most people mm. feel unsafe cycling, and traffic has become so bad that it's literally faster to walk. Dang. So any alternative to driving has the ability to reduce car traffic. It doesn't mean that everybody has to take the bus or that everybody has to ride a bicycle. Even the Autolua areas in the Netherlands allow some motor vehicles. But making the alternatives faster for even a segment of the population can lead to significant improvements. And some Dutch cities like Amsterdam do this really well. I occasionally hear drivers in the Netherlands complaining that they have to take circuitous routes through the city to get to their destination, or that they have to wait while bicycles and trams get priority. But I assure you, the alternative is worse. Mm -hmm. If taking a car becomes quick and convenient, then all these people on trams and bicycles will take a car too, and that direct route will become slower to drive than today's indirect route. Not to mention all the other problems that come along with an increase in car traffic in the city. So the next time you're sitting in traffic and see the bus speed by in the priority lane, remember <laughs> the Downs-Thompson paradox and be glad you're not driving in this. I wish I could. I drive in that most of the time. Most of the time when I have to go to work, when I have to be in my office, I, I have to. I have to drive in that. But, hey, I thought that was pretty good. Hey, y'all comment below. Let me know, like, what are y'all's 
best transportation practice what is what's y'all best transportation where you're at maybe you ride the bike maybe you got a car maybe you take the train the tram or the bus y'all let me know in the comments below hey that's all i have for this video y'all hit that subscribe button and y'all be blessed be the best then be you i'm out